Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, I was recently at the GSBF Rendezvous in Santanella, California, and I sold a bunch of these Japanese black pine two-year-old starters that we sell on bonsify.com. And while I was at the show and before and after, I've had a lot of questions from various people about what's the next step for these trees. So today I'm gonna to go through and show you guys a few different examples of what I do with these trees at this critical stage. You kind of have to think of bonsai at this stage as like a ball of clay if you're a potter. So this tree, and this is the thing that makes me really excited about growing trees from scratch, this tree can still be pretty much anything that you can imagine. And so I'm going to I'm gonna go through and give you guys uh, some different examples and we'll see how many I can get through. But this guy uh, we'll do first. Now I'm going to pull it out of the pot so you can see it. And this time of year, uh, I'm seeing in my own in my own growing a lot of uh, a lot of nice root growth going into the fall. So it's it's uh, early October here in San Francisco. These two-year-old pines have been out in the field um, growing for the last year, for the most part. Uh, I've had some issues with root aphids. I've had some issues with uh, some of them staying too wet and just sort of general uh, health issues but here we are at the end of year two of this pine's life and just to look back at the combing out the roots all right so just to look back at you know what's happened up to this point uh, this was germinated in um, January of 2020. It's now October of 2021. So it's had two full growing seasons. And at some point I put a wire on the young, most likely one year old to create this movement. And then it, with this particular one, the wire bit in a little bit, which is why I haven't shipped it off to a customer. Um, and so it has some nice movement in this section of the trunk and that's because if you want to get tight movement in your lower trunk by the end of year two there's already too much wood to really get any real twists and turns now this reverse taper that the wire caused here is not of too much concern at this stage because even though it's made kind of a bulge uh, things tend to even out over time on these guys and that'll end up being kind of just some interesting character on the trunk. But what we do need to do um, is figure out exactly what the plan is for this. So because this one already has some, some pretty good twists and turns low on, on the trunk here, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna design this, I'm gonna take this forward as an example, making it into kind of a shoheen sized tree. And what that means is that I want the trunk to get a lot bigger. Um, I want to set the starting point for all of the primary branches if I can. Uh, there's not a lot of side buds, but there are a couple here. And I want to keep everything relatively compact. And most importantly, um, before I pot this up, this is my best chance to make sure I give myself the cut point for the sacrifice branch. So let's go ahead and, and put a piece of wire on here. wire applied. Now let's talk about what I just did because there's uh, quite a bit going on here. So one, I took the tail end of the wire and kind of wrapped it around the roots uh, in, a, in a kind of spring sort of thing here. And the reason I did that was I want the roots to be controllable as a mass like this. I'm not too concerned yet about their exact direction, but I did comb them out already. Um, so I don't want the roots to come down and go straight out because when you later go and try to put you try to put this tree five years from now or six years or whatever however many years into this tiny little shoheen pot if your roots are all going laterally out like that it's not going to fit in this pot so think about the end point that you're trying to get to when you're designing your tree 
So I want these roots to kind of go down and slowly flare out. And you'll still see the junction between the trunk and the roots, but they'll kind of naturally uh, melt together and that'll make it easier ultimately to get it into a small container. So thinking of the, all of the steps of the design with the end point in mind. So the next thing that I did was I skipped on this coil of wire this whole previously wired section, you're just like, that is terrible wiring technique, right? My teacher, I'm sure, would be really mad at me. Um, or be like, what the heck are you doing? But this is just a waste of time. And not only is it a waste of time to rewire this because it's already got some cool movement in it, I, I run the risk of actually knocking these buds off. So all I did was basically just bridge that wire across. It's got a full loop on this side and it's got more than a full loop on this side. And this is the section I want to bend, and this is the section I want to bend. So if it makes sense for the tree that you have that you're working on uh, to skip a section of trunk like that, don't feel like you can't use non-standard wiring technique because certainly this is non-standard, but there's a reason we're doing it. All right, so I've kind of clumped the roots and kind of pushed them down to this angle so that they are going to be more friendly in the long term in terms of getting into a small container that is our our goal for this tree now uh, the next thing i want to do is i want to kind of think about well what angle uh, am i going to put this at and you know i've got some if this is the front i've got some nice buds here that could be branches and then above that so i've got a nice movement in the trunk um, and the roots would would give it some good stability there when they get a little bit bigger, but um, there's no cut point, right? So I would have to cut the tree here to put the big scar in the back, um, or I would have to cut the tree on the side. Uh, so we wanna bend this down. Now, not only does that control where our cut point is, it also reduces the vigor slightly of this and increases the light and whatnot that gets to these lower buds. So we're kind of balancing out the natural vigor of the tree. The hormones that this part of the tree make are then not going to influence these guys as much. So let's assume that the angle is about like that. Uh, and I could do this a hundred different ways, but basically all I want to do, so now I just made an S <laughs> and I always try to avoid S's, but sometimes the best way to avoid an S is to make an S and then and then change it. Uh, and like I said, I want to give myself options. So maybe it maybe it is five years from now that that I decide um, that I actually don't want this to be a showing. So don't think like give yourself some options in the end. So I've got the wire applied and I've created a bunch of bends here and I'm looking at the angles, I'm turning it around, you know, maybe it looks like we actually could use the back as the front as well. Uh, although that would reduce the number of uh, potential cut points that we have here. So it, it's always a trade off, but at this, at this stage, what we're trying to ensure is that we don't end up with something that we don't want. Now, even though we're planning on these buds being the, uh, the sacrifice branch essentially going forward and that the trunk line that I've created here with these little buds that are here around the one year node and all of this section being the upper trunk. So we're hoping for more buds in this section, which is more likely to happen now that we've bent all of this and created uh, more exposure to sunlight. It's likely that we will get some buds from these needles. It's not a guarantee, um, but that would be ideal to have some buds come out up here so that we could start creating the crown of our tree while we're also fattening up the trunk. Now, in case we change our minds later, the two year, you know, this node point that's at the base of these buds, <clears throat> this center bud will become the next uh, branch or the next trunk extension. And these three other buds will just become side branches. So unless something happens to this center bud, these guys won't actually take off and become the main leader of the tree. And with three big ones here, as well as a little teeny one there and another little teeny one, teeny tiny one there, um, we're gonna end up with a, a whorl here that is gonna cause some swelling that would make it very difficult for us to use this 
uh, junction as part of the finished composition moving forward because it'll, it'll tend to kind of swell a little bit too much. So in order to prevent that uh, moving into next year, we can actually take off most of these uh, large side buds and you could leave one of them but because I have a little side bud right here, I'll just leave that one and the center one. And I just twist them off with my fingers. And that's to kind of just reduce the possibility of reverse taper. It is gonna slow down the, the tree's development because the tree will make a little bit less foliage next year. But better to, in my opinion, have the option of using this as part of the composition um, and have it look a little bit better than have that extra little bit of growth. All right, so I did a light comb out of the roots and because all of these needles are hardened off, uh, I'm not too concerned about doing a little bit of root work right now. If in your area you're headed into uh, a very cold winter, which we don't get here in the Bay Area, then you'd probably wanna wait till spring to do any sort of repotting. But because I can do it, uh, I know I can do it, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this into its next container. I could leave it in the three and a half inch container and get some decent growth on it in the next year. But I want to, uh, since I'm already messing around with it, go ahead and put it in a large container. So I'm gonna use this six inch uh, Finofil pond basket. Now, if you guys can see that, this is a British company that makes these and I actually buy them from a guy on eBay. And if you just search Finofil on eBay, you'll be able to get them. So I'm gonna fill this up with my standard uh, seedling mix still which is uh, mostly perlite and a little bit of cocoa coir and then i'm going to try to figure out how to anchor this in here so if i just kind of set it in there and um, put it at the angle that i want it to be at and then put a scoop of soil over it because this tree is not super tall um, it's not likely to it's not likely to tip over but i'll show you guys a little uh, technique that you can use for anchoring it to make sure that it doesn't tip over. Because this is a small tree and ultimately we want it to get really big, I don't want to use tie wires that are in the soil because they might cut into the roots and I won't be able to see if that's happening. So I'm going to take this piece of number one aluminum and just anchor it to the side of the container. One of the additional benefits of these of these pond baskets is that they already have holes in the side uh, that you can use to poke little bits of wire through. So just wrap that around on one side and then I usually try to do at least like three quarters of a turn around. So if you can't see I've wrapped the little wire around the big wire that's attached to the trunk and then I'm just sort of strapping that down to the container and I've done with a taller tree, I would use uh, at least three ties, sometimes just two wires going side to side, four, so four anchor points um, to keep the tree from moving. But this one's already reasonably stable. Now, because it's kind of low and uh, not, too, not too tippy, uh, it's not gonna really wobble on me too much. And this will just keep it from being like, if it gets blown over or something like that, um, keep it from, spilling out all of its soil. There's example number one of what to do with your two-year-old Japanese black pine aimed at creating a shoheen, large trunk shoheen uh, bonsai. And your timeline there is probably still another 10 years or so uh, in order to get all the bulking and branches in place to have a decent looking tree. Okay, for our second example, what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to make a tall Bunjin style tree. So a tall kind of elegant line on the tree. And I'm gonna use this tree uh, as, the, as the subject and we'll uh, take a look at next steps. So I've pulled it out of the container and I'm just gonna take a quick look at what the roots look like uh, for our surface root display before I, uh, before I go to design uh, the top of the tree. All right, so I've exposed the surface roots and what I can see immediately is I've got a, a root kind of coming over this way that I don't like, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one off. Um, 
The great thing about removing roots at this stage is it's really, it doesn't really have uh, much of an impact long term. You don't see scars or anything like that. And so you can, you can just sort of do uh, the subtraction method essentially rather than having to reorient all the roots uh, in order to make your root base look good. This is actually kind of a heavy root intervention for this time of year. Usually when I do fall root work, um, I tend to just sort of keep it light. But <clears throat> just to kind of show you guys, if you're doing this in the spring, you can do a little bit heavier root work. Uh, and again, if, you're, if, you're li if you live in a climate where you get a lot of cold weather, um, it, you either need to have enough time for these roots to kind of reestablish themselves, which is like three or four weeks worth of you know, moderate temperatures, or you need to wait for spring um, in order to do this operation. So I've kind of untangled the roots and I'm looking at the, the movement that they have as they join up with the trunk in order to optimize that. And even though this is gonna be a tall tree, I still want the, the base to look interesting. I don't necessarily want it to be really powerful because with the tall tree, uh, we want the, we're looking for more of an elegant look in the in the plant. I don't know about you guys, but I think you just killed that plant. Continuing on. All right, so I've I've got the wire on here, and um, I've done the same thing that I did with the shoheen tree, and that is to kind of like clump the roots together and push them down. So I. If we can get like a nice tapering base on this, that will make the plant all the better. I don't mind the roots being a little bit intertangled, but I wanna make sure that they're kind of going all the same direction. Now, looking at this tree, there's a, there's a node right here, and we've got one strong, already relatively long branch coming out that I haven't wired. And then we've got one small bud right here. I'm gonna take this off because I don't want this, bud, this node uh, to swell anymore. And then I'll still have this, this short branch, which <clears throat> we can keep, you would want to keep an eye on as you continue developing the tree. The other thing I want to mention is that there is a wire scar right here, which has caused a little bit of swelling. And the best way to deal with that actually is to allow the wire to bite in below it a little bit. So we might, um, keep an eye on this wire and, um, sort of, take it off above that scar, but then let it bite in a little bit here to cause some more undulation in the bark later as the tree gets a little bit bigger. So now that I've got the node figured out here, I've applied the wire up, up here, trying to go between as many needles as possible. You don't want to smash them down because those are the, you know, the power, power plant for the tree. And then I'm going to create some twisting movement. I want to bend this guy. I want to, you know, so I'll use the trick where I, I make a bend like this and then use that bend as a, a point of leverage to um, kind of actually twist the growth. And then we want to avoid S curves just like with anything in bonsai. And we also want to take into account the movement that we have down here. So there's some nice little wiggles down here. And then what I've just made right now are all more gentle. Um, so try to vary the, the, the movement by making some of the, some of the curves a little bit sharper than the others, and that will improve the, the look of the tree in the long term. Now, as we get up to the top here, let me move a few of these needles around. We have the issue with these, all of these strong buds, and you can see there's one, two, three, four side buds at this whorl plus the main junction. Um, there are a couple of different ways you could do this. So if you want to, if, if you're trying to create a tree that is like, this is a little, maybe 14 inches tall at the moment, but if you're, if you're trying to create a tree that is relatively large, like say you wanted a three foot tall, big tree, and this was just the first trunk section of it, um, then you definitely would, you know, you'd get there most quickly by utilizing this, uh, center bud. 
but you could also take off the center bud if you want to kind of slow the tree down and reduce the inner node length because that center bud's likely to produce another shoot that's about this long, which absent any coaxing from you won't actually produce any side buds in that next section. And the next side buds will come at the next whorl. But what I wanna do is I wanna take off these uh, little buds on the side and I'm gonna just leave one of the smallest one essentially and I just grab them with my fingers and twist them. And that's gonna reduce the chances that we get any sort of inverse taper at that node. And that makes it a little bit easier to use that if you decide ultimately in your composition that you want to keep it. The other thing I'm gonna do is rather than leaving this bud pointing straight up like that, which would make the tree perfectly happy, uh, I'm gonna make the tree a little bit unhappy and I'm going to bend this bud and its side buds, give them a little bit of a twist. Now, this gives me an opportunity to uh, put a little bit more movement in it because when the bud starts to elongate, it's not gonna go this way, it's gonna, it's gonna immediately bend straight up and go that way. And that's the tree adding another curve. So, but now it looks like I've got a little bit of a corkscrew here, so I want to uh, kind of do I want to keep that bud, if this is our front, I want to keep this bud sort of oriented either to the side or the back, not coming straight at me, because that uh, straight at you thing makes it really hard to make a convincing uh, cut on the tree if you needed to make it at that point. The other thing is that by making this sort of a hard bend, we're more likely to get some buds uh, in this area coming out from between these needles. All right, so... Let me just take one more look at this. Not sure that I like that trunk line, so. All right, let's go with that. Now, because I'm not planning on making a giant tree out of this, I'm not gonna put it into a giant container. I'm gonna use the same six inch basket that I used for the Shoheen size, uh, and that's gonna provide for vigorous growth. So this will provide for vigorous growth for the next couple of years, but not so vigorous that it's uncontrollable. All right, I've got it about two thirds of the way full. And in this case, I won't even be able to get this to stand up by itself. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some guy wires to the wire that I applied to the trunk. All right, with four tie points and I've got them wrapped around the wire that's wrapped around the trunk that will keep this guy from falling over. The root base down here can still potentially move a little bit, but I'm gonna add some more soil on top of that. And unless this thing uh, prior to any root growth gets a really good tip over, uh, that should keep it safely secured so that it can grow and get those roots reestablished in the container. All right, in example number three, and we'll make this our last one, I'm going to uh, take this two-year-old Japanese black pine and I'm going to start it on its way to being a small tree. Now, I really like these pots by Mitsunobu Ito, Ito uh, ITO. We sell some of these on bonsify.com and so you can check them out there. But this one's about two inches across. This is about three and a half inch container. And it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to get it in here, but I'll, I'm gonna see what I can do. Um, so what I wanna do is everything that's gonna make this tree kind of start doing something other than just becoming a giant tree. So it already has a, a, a trunk that has some movement and um, it's about the size of a pencil. So that's certainly big enough to make a mame Japanese black pine, but what we have to figure out is how do we slow this thing down and how do we get it to start making the type of foliage that will be more interesting at this scale. Because we're gonna to try to put this into such a small container, 
I want to uh, basically remove everything that is not going to conform to that. So that root was a little bit too high and um, looking, making the base look unbalanced. So we're actually looking at sort of, not the final aesthetics, but we have to look at the rough trunk shape here <clears throat> because as a mame, it's not likely that the trunk is going to change too much once we get it into that tiny, tiny container. I'm gonna kind of trim these roots into a rough sort of circle that's a little bit bigger than the pot that I have. Now, this is more roots than I cut off of the other two examples. Um, and that's because I'm trying to put it into a tiny container. But, so I just wanna reiterate that this type of work is best done in, uh, in spring at, during your repotting interval and the the fall period that i'm working in right now is probably the second best time but only if you can provide protection and warmth to the roots for um you know probably three four or or more weeks uh, after you perform this operation so if you're getting cold temperatures this uh in the fall already and it's not going to get any warmer or stay warmer for a few weeks then this type of operation is not really um, advisable at this time of year you would want to do it in the spring instead all right so i think i can get this in there now uh, given the proper technique and so i'm still going to wire the trunk but with the size tree that we're talking about i'm absolutely not going to want any of this growth up here so I'm actually gonna come in here and cut this down. Now, the great thing about Japanese black pine is I have probably um, maybe three weeks left in the growing season, depends on the, the weather here. And I've just cut off all of the new major growth that this tree made for the year, um, almost at the end of the season. So it's not going to react like a candle cutting and put out a bunch of new shoots. But what it will do is it'll set a bunch of buds at the base of all of these needles and anything down here on the trunk that is has any you know potential thoughts of popping out is gonna pop out with like just setting a bud like they do at the tip of the branch. And then in the spring, those will start to elongate. And it might look messy for a little while, but it, it gets us, you know, even though we're starting at this stage, it gets us sort of going in the direction that we want. Can't believe he just did that.
All right, that's three examples of what you can do with a two-year-old Japanese black pine if you've got different endpoints in mind. And just a review, this one is going to be a shoheen, the timeline for um, it being in a bonsai pot and kind of finished is probably you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years, something like that. This one is going to be a Bunjin style black pine, and uh, that would probably have a similar timeline, although you could get a decent crown on it if you want the trunk to stay really small like this, uh, just by starting to work on the branches rather than allowing the trunk to continue to elongate. And this one I put straight into a Mame hex nut container by Mitsunobu Ito uh, from Japan, and We'll see how they all do. I'll, uh, I'll share with you guys uh, an update in terms of the progress of the trees uh, as, as things happen. But just a final note on seasonality. Here in San Francisco in the fall, there's uh, mild weather right now and these trees are all hardened off. All of these needles are mature and they're putting out new root growth. So it's a good time of the year for me to be doing this sort of operation. But if you have doubts, the safest time of the year to be doing this type of operation is normally in the spring. And you can actually even separate out the different parts of the operation, one being wiring of the trunk and reorientation, which you could do now, and the other being the repotting, which you could then do in the spring repotting window. Hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, look forward to the next video. Please like and subscribe to the channel and share the video with a friend if uh, you know someone who's not watching our channel. See you all next time.